Okay, love. I'm heading out. What? Are you sure you want to go out there without a coat? A coat? Yes, it's eight degrees out there. What? It doesn't look that cold. Well, that's 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, right. Let me get the coat. I am a Yank in Sussex. As I may have mentioned in a previous video, when I was in my teens I lived for a couple of years here in England, in Gloucestershire. I attended Cheltenham Grammar School, and at that time there were fewer cars on the road, roundabouts were still kind of new, and all the measurements were very familiar, because at that time the US and the UK both still used the imperial system of measurement, although in the US they call it the US customary system of units. Why is that? Well, because of King George III, I suppose. But it actually does differ somewhat from the imperial system. For example, the imperial gallon is about 20% larger than the U.S. gallon. Never mind, whether I was dealing with the U.S. or the U.K., it was still 12 inches to the foot, 3 feet to the yard, 1,760 yards or 5,280 feet to the mile, or 16 ounces to the pound, and 2,000 pounds to the ton two pints in a quart, and water froze at 32 degrees. Piece of cake. Oops, that was actually 2,200 pounds to the ton in Imperial, which is again 20% larger than the American ton. And they say everything is big in Texas. On the other hand, when I lived briefly back then in the UK, I had to deal with y'all's money at the time. That was a different kettle of fish. You had pounds, shillings, and pence, with 12 pennies to a shilling and 20 shillings to a pound. Okay, so far, but there was also a confusing mass of coins of various values. Sixpence and threepence were clear, being six and three pence, no problem. But Bob? Bob's your uncle. What's a florin? Or a crown? Or a half crown? I suppose I shouldn't have been confused because U.S. coinage includes such names as dimes, nickels, and quarters, just as non-obvious as florins, crowns, and half crowns. I worked briefly on Saturdays as a cashier in a department store in Cheltenham for a time, and with the somewhat primitive cash registers at the time, they could add up the purchase total just fine. Your total, sir, is three pounds, eight shillings, and sixpence. Except that one might actually say, three quid, eight bob, and sixpence. So, sir hands you a fiver, and now it's your job to figure how much to give back. All right, let's calculate this. First of all, write down the five and zero and zero for a five quid note. Then minus three, eight and six. Three pounds, eight and six. Okay, now don't have any pence or shillings available to subtract with, so we gotta borrow from the fiver, making that a four. Pushing the 20 to the shillings, and then borrowing a one shilling from that and making the pennies 12. 12 minus six is six. And then we got 11, and then one pound, 11 and six, and that's the change. But in February 1971, while I was still there, you switched over to decimal. Yay! But then I wasn't working in the department store. But it was still nice to be able to figure out whether someone had given me correct change without hauling out my notepad and figuring it out on paper. When I arrived back in the UK in 2017, however, some things had changed. Money was still decimal. Cheltenham Grammar School was now Pate's Grammar School in Cheltenham, and had switched from being an all-boys school to being co-educational, or mixed sex. Gallons had been replaced by liters, and when you went to the grocery store instead of a pound of onions, it was now 500 grams. But most strangely, a comfortable room temperature was now 23 degrees, and if the outside temperature got to be 30 degrees, it was a heat wave. What madness was this? To me, despite knowing intellectually that Celsius started at zero as the freezing point of water and went to 100 when the water boiled, I was most familiar with Dr. Fahrenheit's scale, where those two measurements were 32 and 212 degrees, respectively. To me, a balmy spring day with 78 degrees was a perfect opportunity to go short-sleeved into the great outdoors. But 25 degrees? Bundle up, because it's Antarctica out there. It turns out that 78 degrees Fahrenheit is the same temperature as 25 degrees Celsius. 
Many Americans have a strange aversion to the metric system, and many Europeans, and for that matter, pretty much everyone else in the world, make fun of Americans for this, justifiably, in my opinion. But when they come to the United States, they get just as frustrated as Americans do when they go to other countries. Turnabout is fair play. Alexa, what's the weather today? Right now in New York, it's 65 degrees with clear skies and sun. Today's forecast has partly sunny weather with a high of 77 degrees and a low of 61 degrees. Uh... But generally speaking, I myself don't have a problem with the metric system. When I attended Cheltenham Grammar School for sixth form, I was in the sciences track and was being taught physics and chemistry. And science, even in the imperial measurement UK at the time, used metric. We dealt in grams, centimeters, milliliters, newtons, pascals, and so forth. All good metric measures. I wasn't entirely unaware of the metric system even before this, since in American high school, I had taken a class on electronics, and the important measuring units there were all metric already. Volts, amperes, ohms, farads, and henrys. By the time I got my A-levels, all that was right up my alley. When I joined the U.S. Army Infantry a few years later, because of the need to interoperate with the European militaries of NATO, the U.S. Army taught us to use the metric distance measurements of meter and kilometer. They helped us visualize how long a meter was by deliberately designing the standard U.S. military rifle, the M16, to be one meter long, and told us that was how long it was. Actually, it wasn't quite, but it was close enough for government work. So unlike some other Americans, I don't have any problem at all with the metric system. Until it comes to temperature. I have a deep personal understanding of the Fahrenheit system. I know what temperature water freezes at, boils at, what the temperature of comfortable bath water is, and what temperature to set my room thermostat to be perfectly neutral while I watch television. These temperatures, by the way, are 32, 212, 176. I've lived with these numbers my entire life. If the outside temperature is 40, I know I better put on a coat and wear gloves. If it's 84, ditch the long sleeves and wear a t-shirt. Even when I lived in the UK from 1969 to 1971, those numbers were the old familiar ones. But in 2017, when I came to this green and pleasant land, it had changed in an unexpected way. Not only they were reporting daily temperatures as Celsius in the weather forecast, my own wife had never been taught the Fahrenheit system in school and was rather amused at my difficulty pertaining to temperature. Yes, I have an intellectual understanding of Celsius. But do I have an emotional understanding? <laughs> Not at all. I've been here seven years and I still puzzle over what 25 degree means in terms with how it feels. To help me out, I bought a temperature sensing system. Here's the receiving device. It measures the ambient temperature of the room it's in, and there are three remote sensors that report to it. Number one is attached to the brick wall on the shady side of the house. Number two is inside the summer house. And number four is in the garage. I usually keep the device displaying in Celsius, and I'm making progress, but I still sometimes have a hard time visualizing the temps, and sometimes switch to Fahrenheit to help myself visualize things. Okay, let's see. Outside, temperature is 23. Inside right here, it's 26.2. Uh, channel 2, that's, oh, that's the summer house. It's 41 degrees. That's hot, isn't it? Okay, what's it look like in the garage? It's 20. Hmm. What's that in real temperature measurements? Okay, switch to Fahrenheit. Okay, there we are. Outside at 74. A nice balmy day, sort of. Inside at 70 to 59. Wow, that's kind of warmish. 105 in the summer house. Wow, that's definitely summer. What's about, what about the garage? The garage. It's 68. Hmm, a little coolish, but that's not bad. Well, anyway, now I know the temperature. I'll eventually be conversant with Celsius. I'm definitely getting better at it after seven years. Maybe one of these days I won't be calculating Fahrenheit in my head when the thermometer reports in Celsius. It's getting close. Incidentally, I do hope you notice the title of this video and how it gives homage to the famous and very funny wartime memoirs of Lance Bombardier, Terence Spike Milligan. Of course, my little video here is nothing near as funny, nor perhaps funny at all, but I hope you enjoyed it. This has been a production of A Yank in Sussex. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. 
If you haven't already done so, please subscribe or follow. Thanks for watching, and may you have a very nice day.